Hello everyone, Eloy here with another update. And I'm happy to report that I finally have drop down buttons that you can actually use and uh, integrate well with the um, rest of the UI components that I'm building. However, this came at a, a steep price. Well, I'm calling it, calling it steep, but this is something that I should have probably thought about uh, before. Um, so the thing is, I had to refactor uh, the whole way that I'm creating the UI widgets, because with every step where, that I took in the direction of higher order elements, uh, it uh, was getting more and more apparent that the original idea I had to create these elements would not work. Basically, I had to make some hacks or workarounds to make certain situations work. Uh, floating panels, for instance, and uh, more specifically, floating panels as part of drop downs required me to have um, a weird composition that actually brought out another bug uh, in Bevy and Taffy. That was basically my fault for using it in a way uh, that was, I, I wouldn't say not supported, but it was a weird case. Anyway, I made changes um, and, and created a new system, well, a new approach to define UI widgets. And I'm calling them widgets and not just elements, uh, because for instance, a scroll container, a scroll view, you, you can call it an element, but in reality, it's, it's a structure of uh, multiple things. So you have a container which has a viewport that actually clips uh, the uh, the content which will overflow in every direction probably. And then you have a container with the scroll bars and you know the actual scroll bars inside. So calling this an element is fine, but it's really not one thing. It's not like a single node that you that you do. And the main problem with all of this is not the structure itself. Is the is the fact that you would want to generate your content in something that's embedded in uh, in in a frame, but you would also need access to the frame itself. For instance, floating panels. You need the ID uh, to be able to um, open uh, the panel. You you need a reference to it uh, somehow, and this required me to think about building the UI differently. And it worked out pretty well. So now I have a more compact, let's say compact, uh, but more um, consistent way of, of creating uh, all of my elements. And the key point of this is uh, this UI builder, which is basically a, a new struct that has um, access to the commands and the entity, optionally, uh, because you would still be, you would still be able to generate content as a root node, um, but you have to actually implement it when you implement a plugin or an extension uh, to the UI builder. So for instance, here is a column, which is an extension on the UI builder that just spawns an, a node bundle with a specific height and the width that you are giving it and the color, of course. Uh, later on, I will add more things as I'm doing the um, the theming and styling uh, part of all of this. But for now, it's just layouting. So uh, the only thing I'm caring about is background color, just to be able to find my elements and define or um, figure out which one is which, you know, to make sure everything is spawning in the right place and uh, does exactly what I want. But anyway, the key point here is that the UI builder gives you access to uh, the commands and the entity commands, which the child builder uh, in Bevy did not. And that was the main source of my all of my problems with uh, building composite UI elements. And uh, that's it. That's it for uh, this week. Um, with all of the refactoring done, I have a working version of uh, of this and as a bonus uh, i worked on uh, little things like uh, making sure that your floating panels is a floating panel that you are that you want is actually on top so you can grab this one and or, uh, or you can grab that one and this is pretty basic stuff but implementing that is not uh, straightforward you know you have to really think about how to find the right order of the uh, of the panels that you are you know, rearranging as you are uh, moving them around. Plus, there is an extra benefit of using the uh, floating panel as part of the 
drop down is that I, I had the ability to simply define a priority uh, panel that will always be on top. And if it's if this is open, you cannot uh, move or drag or interact with the other panels. So you actually have uh, the right um, result of your, your, your manipulation of the UI elements. I have also made a little thing to to be able to scroll through elements because the the options would always block the uh, the interaction and then I could not you know scroll here, but th these are just the the quick wins after I have made all of the uh, all of the changes, and another um, way to show how simple uh, it is to work with uh, something like a floating panel now. I updated my uh, radio buttons to toggle specific uh, properties of, of this specific panel. So if I put it to draggable, you can no longer resize the panel, but you can still move it around. If you want it resizable, you cannot uh, move it around anymore, but you can still resize. And then you can turn it back on both. And to show how much code this is, uh, it's this one. So it's just a few lines of code, basically just to check uh, the value of the radio button. And this is only executed when it's changed. So the uh, the uh, the query here would only return radio groups that have actually been updated or changed um, because uh, it, it won't change every frame, just when you are changing it. And we just simply change the properties and the floating panel will care about it itself. It will uh, process its own config, which is separate from uh, the floating panel itself. It's a separate uh, component. So you can specifically target changes on the component that's related to uh, features of it and not uh, the layout of it. And to show you the, uh, the radio group, it is as simple as, as this one. I want a radio group with three uh, buttons or well, three, three options which are named like so. And then I insert a panel feature control for the panel ID. And again, before it was uh, like a weird way to get access to the panel ID, but with the new approach, you can just ask the panel for its ID. And that's it for uh, this week. I'm going to continue with layout elements. I think I will create a menu next, uh, like the thing that's supposed to be up here, you know, and probably will upgrade the the um, upgrade the column and the row um, widgets to actually have uh, resizable uh, borders like the floating panel. And then just start, you know, knocking out the containers for uh, tab views and and uh, drag and drop panels. Anyway, I hope this was interesting, even if it was just about drop downs. And I hope to see you again to talk about more, you know, drop downs and menus and layouts. Have fun. Ciao, ciao.